Hello, friends. It's John Ryan here for Financial Coaching, Cross Shield Financial. I'm here with Rudy Upshaw. Uh, we're talking today about uh, one of our favorite topics, and that is retirement and how much the concept of retirement has changed over the years, over the decades, really, um, and really get into the history of, you know, the number people think of either 62 or 65. And I think there, there's some talk of maybe bump that up to 70, right, Rudy? Um, yeah. How are you doing this morning, sir? Fantastic, John. Thanks for having me on today to uh, share a little bit about my perspective. And I definitely want to hear your perspective and how you serve your clients powerfully in this area of the new retirement. So, Rudy, in the new retirement, we're talking about, let's give a little background, right? The 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 early, the days of retirement, it's a new concept, right? People used to work uh, until they dropped. Um, young people took care of old people. And the concept of social security, most people know that that was born uh, kind of a depression era uh, response. And it gave people a safety net, right? And the average person was going to retire in their early 60s and then was only going to live statistically for another five, six, seven years, right? So that's really the roots uh, of our retirement age uh, where Social Security kicked in. And of course, people building wealth on their own um, is is a product of, you know, when pensions were popular, when pensions ruled, uh, people didn't worry about it, right? People worked for the company, the pension was going to carry them, Social Security was a supplement. And we all know that that changed uh, in the 70s when, when 401ks uh, came in and really uh, pensions became uh, a, a thing of the past, right? And so what we have now in what I call the new retirement is just this fact that people live much longer, right? We've got medical technology, we've got uh, drugs and all the medical care that allows people to live much longer. And so preparing for a long two-person retirement is a totally different ball game. So helping people navigate that and understand uh, how long retirement really is and the fact that the, the, the purchasing power of their dollar is what is important. That's what you're trying to preserve in those retirement years is, is top priority. And so Rudy, share with me your perspective on that uh, as we talk about you know closing in on uh, the, the, the golden years, if you will. Yeah, John, uh, all the points that you mentioned are exactly spot on. And uh, I think where we are today, uh, there's still quite a bit of that leftover uh, thought or idea of, you know, working for a company for a long time, having those pensions, having those retirement structures kind of set in place um, would be sufficient. But you're right, the, the, the job market uh, as a whole has changed. People are living longer. And also when this was put in place, like you mentioned, you know, many years ago, many decades ago, it was a response to um, really the government helping set up some structures in place to make sure that people had uh, those dollars in place when they weren't able to continue to physically or even maybe mentally continue to work. All that has changed. And, um, you know, there's even a lot of talk about, you know, is Social Security going to be around when we get to those ages? So, uh, you know, the idea of other other people, government entities or even companies, you know, having structures in place to provide for those dollars for people uh, when they choose to not work anymore is just really not there. And so we as financial coaches want to make sure that we address what does what does that not necessarily retirement, but based on our clients goals, what they want to accomplish, what they want their life to look like when they get to the place when they uh, will retire. Because John, 100% of the time, we are going to retire. Whether it's forced upon us or whether we choose to, there's going to come a place where the the income and working uh, for that income is going to be different. Um, and so it, it's really a concern. In fact, we just uh, recently worked with uh, uh, new clients and they're in their mid-60s. And um, they've done a really great job with taking care of their family, their kids, giving them good financial education, good backgrounds in those areas for the kids to be self-sufficient. However, um, they themselves have identified, oh my goodness, we're now in our mid-60s. We're getting close to that retirement age. 
And we, we know that if we were to retire and come out of the workforce, the, the monies that we have set aside <clears throat> are only going to get us just a few years. And yeah. then we're in a place where we have to start liquidating assets. So it's a very common thing that we see uh, in coaching over the last probably 10, 20 years. Um, and people have identified that, okay, I, I now know that we're not where we need to be. And it kind of, it snuck up on them, John, and this <laughs> should not be an environment that it should have snuck up on them. And so, uh, we want to be there, John, uh, to help them figure that out, to know what's going on so that, um, you know, they can kind of pull their head out of the sand and look at things that are of reality and where they are financially and help them figure that out in whatever decision they need to make in that. So, yeah, the idea that it sneaks up on people, it's true, Rudy. It's amazing. Um, it's something that's coming. And if you look, you can see it, but it does seem to sneak up on people. Um, and I love the the idea of, you know, building kind of a best case scenario model, right? We know what the best case would be if you were able to start at 18 years old. And we help people, no matter where they are on the journey, kind of correct and adjust you can never redo the past, but you can start to figure out what's the best case scenario, what's the path forward for wherever you are on the timeline. So I want to share with you, Rudy, uh, you know that my kids, you know, Laura is, is 16. And so launching a young adult into this world, that best case scenario model can really be played out. And again, helping people figure it out from wherever they are. But I'm looking at it as a three phase model, right? There's this myth that you jump out of school, whether it's high school, college, wherever you are into the workforce, and now you're you're going to do this thing and it has to be perfect and you have to love it, right? There's this myth about that. And so I'm teaching my kids that that phase one is something that is, you don't want to hate it. That's a bad idea, but it is work. And the, the most important thing is to get out there learn how to deal with people, learn your skill, learn your craft, whatever it is, and avoid debt, right? Do the thing, move forward, do the best you can with the idea that a phase two will be an improvement, right? Maybe you don't love what you picked. So many people, you know, they come out of college and they don't work in that field to begin with, or they figure out, I didn't choose something that fits me. So, you, you get through that, you learn and you gain experience. And now phase two, you move into something that you like more, right? You're able, maybe you can go back to school. You've avoided debt. So your financial foundation is set to the point where regrouping and doing something different is possible. And Rudy, how often do we see people handcuffed to something they don't love because their finances aren't square. They haven't built the foundation. And so now they're stuck in something that they don't really like or even hate, right? So if you can avoid that, again, the phase two model, you've grown the financial fundamentals. Phase three is where you actually earned the right to do something that you love, something that fits your personality, that fits the, the mature version of you the best. And we don't know, that could be in your 40s, it could be in your 50s, it could be as late as your 60s or you know into your 70s, but you're able to do something that you love. Your finances are in a position where you don't, you're not handcuffed, you don't have those golden handcuffs on that you have to make X amount of money. And now this idea that retiring uh, can happen later, you could actually throttle down and do the thing less. And retirement becomes this blend of doing what you love and having enough money. I'd love to get your response to that, Rudy, is, you know, again, best case scenario, how do we adjust to get into that position? John, I, I love the three phases that you're walking through with your kids, because what, what you're actually doing and showing your kids is this building legacy aspect, but you're looking at 20 to 40 years out, you're saying, okay, you know, I I've identified that this retirement, this new retirement that you identified is different and we can't rely on others to figure that out for us. So for my kids and my family, you're looking at that 40 year ahead. You're saying, okay, what can I do to help my, my kids and my family be successful when they get to that stage? And you're starting it out as early as possible. 
with your phase one, getting that job, learning the life skills, avoiding this debt, phase two, getting that emergency fund established so that when emergencies do happen and they're going to for all of us, there's that financial um, uh, you know, structure to help them get through that. And then that phase three for you, John, once you've got kind of the phase one, the phase two done, this phase three is now we put the additional structure in place to give us that, uh, that power, that ability to be able to do the things that we really truly want to do. So um, I, I love how you've uh, structured that for your own family. And these are many of the principles that John, you as a financial coach help other people look at. Yes, we have people that get into situations where the retirement has snuck up on this and they're kind of in that place of, uh, you know, concern, but we also want to look at the downstream piece, right? If, if we can help our clients figure that retirement piece out and put the plans and, and the processes in place to help them, it has an impact of building legacy down the line, which is one of our components as financial coaches is this building legacy piece. John, the best time to plant an oak tree was 20 years ago. The second best time to plant that oak tree is today. Rudy, that is a classic and I love it. Uh, I think we're going to wrap it up with that. Uh, that's a beautiful metaphor. Uh, Rudy Upshaw, thank you, sir, for being my coach and for uh, helping me serve our clients powerfully here in 2024. I will talk with you again soon. Thanks, John.